morning. Hi. <laughs> good thoughts to John Mann and Gord Downey, yeah. wherever you are. Oh, wow. Yeah, some, uh, some icons, eh? Wonderful. Still a few of you coming in, but I think we will get started because I am sure that you are all dying to know if you got the right answer to this particular brain bender. Um, so what we're going to do, if you wouldn't mind, please, is hold off on the annotation. I'm going to, I'm going to release the function so that you can annotate. Release the function! <laughs> Or maybe I'll just click on some buttons to do it. Oh, is that how it works? <laughs> and then, um, when on the count of three, so one, two, stamp oh. the answer that you think it is, and we'll see whether or not uh, you got the right answer, okay? So, one, two, after three? No, 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 on three. One, two, stamp. You got it? <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to, don't, don't do it yet. I'm going to give you the power you to annotate, and then... You can go to your view options, annotate, but hold on <laughs> and get your stamp ready. And we'll just give everybody an extra few seconds. Hold on. Oh, don't stamp. What, don't stamp. What will I choose? <laughs> but I do see that you are ready. So, okay, good. On the count of three, stamp what you think the answer is. One, two, three. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> this is fun. We should just do this stuff for class. <laughs> Super There's good. There's a hole okay. in my bucket. So, um, very importantly, um, the answer is... <laughs> I still see them stamping. It's awesome. Okay. I, the answer is F. So, let's clear... Clear all drawings. This one is F right here. And so the answer is F. Okay. And we will have it posted in the slides if you want to go back and figure out why it's F and not K, for example. Um, that would be totally fine. So, <laughs> so there you go. The answer is F. Um, thank you for playing. That was fun. I had a good time. <laughs> well, I hope you did too. Um, okay. Uh, you had something to say. Yeah, uh, those of you who are studying, if there's anybody who's still studying, yeah. or you're interested in these things, um, the videos from these get-togethers are posted. You see links on uh, your course link that are split up by lecture, just as everything's kind of organized super well there, we feel, on your course link page. Where we upload them on YouTube, I've made them a playlist. Um, so if there's a link, that the title in this slide is a link, so you can go there later on, if you wish, just to have like, nice. just kind of scroll through, sit back, scroll backwards, <laughs> forwards. Cool. Check it out. Yeah, great. Okay. Just to reiterate, we are not going to be in this format of midterm. We do not test trivia or your ability to memorize facts, okay? It's all about skills. The, the facts and the trivia and the definitions and stuff are more about the quizzes, the online stuff, just to make sure that you've got that down or at least you understand um, you know, the concepts that you need to know in order to be able to, to go forward. The midterm tests the higher level cognitive functioning. Um, so, don't memorize how many muscle species there are in the lakes or the names of the lakes or where the lakes are or anything like that. Take those big concepts and understand the muscles as an example of those things to be able to explain them and to find other things. The midterm is open book in that you must Google stuff um, in order to be able to... If you wanted to, you could, I, you could bing them, but <laughs> why would you do that? It just says that your computer's not well set yeah, up Yeah, no, you have to. Don't just pull things off the top of your head. We want you to go out into the internet and find things. Um, we, or you can make things up. Do you remember up, Alta Vista? Then, or Dogpile? I don't think I'm old enough for You're, that. Yeah, you might not be. <laughs> oh, I remember the internet. Uh, so, Send so, a self-addressed stamped envelope to Google, <laughs> Mountain View, California. Yeah. If you have any more questions about that, stick Ooh, around after you. class. No, don't do that. Um, no, um, we'll, uh, we'll be happy to, um, you know, to go through that with you and what that means and things like this. Okay, <laughs> cool. Oh, and some of you heard about this. I put a link in the uh, chat a couple of minutes ago and some of you had even already heard about it and we're congratulating Dr. Jacobs in the chat about 
this super impressive scholarly award for this super impressive <laughs> scholarly person. Dr. Thank Jacobs you. won the prestigious Okufa Teaching Award, yeah. uh, which the Okufa is the Ontario, no, the Ontario Confederation of University Faculty Associations. So it's like, it's like the super friends of professors. <laughs> And all the super friends got together in their hideout, and they were like, who are we going, who is the teaching <laughs> award winner this year? It's very nice. And it's Dr. Jacobs. And so I, ha I have to, you know, at least at least say thank you to the, the people that have made it possible. And I, I teach with a lot of really amazing people, um, but you just happen to be sitting next to me. Um, and more importantly, <laughs> <What do you laughs> <mean but? laughs> and more importantly, um, it's not so much, you know, this teaching 1070 together, which is always awesome, um, and super fun, but I do have to acknowledge that, um, you already having been a rock star in your field, um, have taken a Ooh. major, who are you talking I'm to? I'm talking about you. Oh, um, you're trying to make me cry. I'm going to make you cry. No, no. no, I have to say this because it's really important. Um, because you, uh, you know, already are a rock star, but even if you weren't, um, the last few years, you've really, you know, put my career forward and first and in our relationship. And I'm grateful. For everything, I'm gonna cry. Um, no, but it's really important to, to acknowledge that, and I appreciate that. Um, you know, you're the official kid wrangler of, of the family, <laughs> and I really appreciate that because the long hours, the extra teaching, we do all of this experimental stuff has always been in the evening after work, right? And so, thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Moving on. No more crying. <laughs> yeah, super good. Thank you. Okay, stop. Wow. <laughs> the people coming in right now are going to be a little bit confused. <laughs> like, kind of awkward. <laughs> yeah, super awkward. Welcome to the new people joining we us. We love all of you, we too. We love all We're of not, you, too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, and for some reason, all of your annotations have slowed down the internet such that... <laughs> there we go. Oh, somebody... <laughs> Such that I can't actually delete them. Clear. I think that just means we take the monitor and push it off the end of the desk. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Okay. <laughs> okay, lock up the tools. Okay, stop! And we're going to clear one more time. Thank you. Okay. Good. There's another thing. Uh, I, I will see if it advances, but I... Um... I stuck it in there. Oh, this is um, this is, no yeah. crying out either, but this is Georgina Mace. Her obituary was published on Monday in The Guardian. She is a scientist. We're talking about species diversity. We're talking about different kinds of diversity. This woman had an enormous global effect on how we use diversity to think about um, protected areas, how we use it to think of, uh, ought, we use, ought, ought we use it or how can we think about it also with social justice issues. She was... Uh, the, one of her students describes her in, in the obituary as being the cleverest person in the room, in all rooms, and never wanting to appear like that. I met her once. She was, she introduced herself to me. And I was like, as I was introducing myself to her, going, this is who I am. I, I, I love all your stuff. Um, and she introduced herself to me as if, I was like, I know who you are. You're Georgina Mace, for Christ's sake. Oh my God. Anyhow, um, we benefit yep. from the work that she did. We will continue to do that. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Re read about her. If you, if you have any interest in biogeography, conservation, biology, conservation, science, uh, the intersection, the uh, overlap of social justice, sociology, and conservation biology, she's a, she's a, she was an amazing person. And participating in this photo in something called soapbox science, which is basically yeah. like a random act of scientist. That go, they go out into the cities and they stand on soapboxes and they talk about their research and the importance of it. And so it's a real kind of SciComm activity that was that was sort of classic her career as well. So, yay. So I see uh, an all caps shouting of, uh, can we do large evolutionary trees? I'm struggling um, with those. So stick around for after the lecture. We're going to talk about ecology and do trees. And we're not going to focus on trees. We're going to think about forests. Yeah. But, but uh, we're happy to talk about large evolutionary trees in the afterwards. Yeah. Not the, what do they call it? Not the underground? Not the... Uh. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so here are our learning outcomes for today. Uh, we're going to start really thinking about 
how do we actually quantify, how do we measure diversity? Uh, so we'll give you some equations and some tools and, and that kind of thing. And, and then we'll give you some homework, but don't do the homework until after the midterm. Yeah. So. What is biodiversity? But. This is, so, um, biodiversity is a, a relatively new term. If you had a, if you got into Bill and Ted and family's time machine and went backwards in time, it, you wouldn't have to go very backwards to arrive at a world that if you use this contraction, they wouldn't know what you're talking about. It is a contraction of biological diversity that EO or Ed Wilson came up with in the, in the late 20th century, 1990s, to talk about any number of things. Um, and, the range of things that it can be used to talk about leads to some of these, the titles of these books. All of them at some point deal with uh, estimates of diversity that dial down to maybe it's the most species rich place. But as you know, as a biologist, uh, that often leads to further questions like, well, wait a second, what is a species? If a, bi if a biodiversity is a collection of species, if that's more species is more biodiverse, what's a species? And So imagine you come up with the super simple definition that we came up with earlier, or last class, about what biodiversity is. And we said it was the number of species, right, within a region or, or ecosystem, or what you said, region, right? Yeah. Place. He said place, within a place. Number of species in a place, right? Well, even, we know what number is. I feel like that's not like a super vague term. But then there are the two terms species, and then there's the other term place that are very vague, right? And so we can memorize this definition or we can dive into it. And let me just show you how we can dive into it um, and get immediately appreciative of, you know, diversity in science as well, not just in species. Because if we use the concept or the, the definition, number of species in a place, then we start to ask, what is a species, right? And so all of a sudden people are writing these books about species and you're like, oh, geez, then what is a species then? If people are writing books and like they're writing different books and they're writing, and they're writing about the history of the books or the idea. And right? some of them are biologists and that's a varied group on its own. And some of them are philosophers. Both of those authors are philosophers. Or mathematicians or whatever, right? Who asked the mathematicians? They never asked <laughs> So... Let's dive into the definition of species a little bit and very quickly delightful examples that are equally confusing start to come to mind, right? Because how do we measure a species? It's a biological concept, of course. You can, you can, you can uh, define it as actually or potentially interbreeding. But then I hope you're thinking about a whole bunch of species that are differently named, but they do interbreed fairly regularly. If not, we'll introduce them to you next, uh, next unit. What about asexual species then, if that's the definition, right? Won't someone think of the rotifer? <laughs> what about hybrids? What about connected extremes? And that's we'll a talk band, about right? That. Yeah, that's the a really connect, good The connected band. extremes? Yeah, or extremely Tegan, connected. That's Tegan and Sarah, like, trying to, like, <laughs> work underground. And then, of course, like, you go to the published literature, and they're talking about about 26 different definitions of species. More than. More than. There's, there's, this is 2012, this publication. Yeah, and so, and so it gets super, I don't want to say confusing, because no. it's not. It gets super complex and yeah. beautiful. And fuzzy. And Remember fuzzy. we talked about fuzzy versus yeah. Aristotelian logic? This is yeah. fuzzy. And that's okay. And we want you to be okay in the fuzziness because that's where a biologist is pretty much all the time. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. okay. Are you okay? Species are okay. Yeah, we're okay. Okay, so it's not just about, you know, memorizing that definition. It's about understanding the depth of it. Can I tell you one uh, definition of a species? Tell uh, me. The number of species concepts. It says yeah. 26 here. John Wilkinson, who wrote one of the philosopher who wrote one of those books earlier about the history of the species concept, said, yeah. how many species concepts are there? It depends on the room. Mm -hmm. If there are N scientists in a room, there are N plus one species <laughs> concepts. That's all. I like N plus one. That's good. <laughs> He's uh, clearly a nerd. Yeah, a friend I, of mine. Joe Kills at the comedy store. <laughs> yeah, a friend of mine was, uh, was doing his PhD qualifying exam, and he's a, he's a taxonomist. Um, and super important question. One of the examiners said, what is a species? 
And he was a bit of a shit disturber and like a bit of a hothead. And he literally all he said was, it is what I think it is. <laughs> and didn't elaborate. <laughs> he didn't do very well in the first round of the qualifying exam. But still, he's not wrong. <laughs> okay. So recognizing, though, that there is fuzziness, we need to move on. We need to say, okay, we understand that there is fuzziness. And so for the purposes of my study, species is what I think it is or what you know, what so-and-so thinks it is, um, and now we move on, right? Now we measure the number of species, for example. And we can do it in the four different woodlots that uh, we have in the asynchronous stuff online, um, and we'll walk you through all, we're walking you through right now, I'm sure you've done um, uh, some of it already, uh, to understand the difference in the diversity of these things. We're gonna kind of bring it together, though, um, and if you remember the last class, we asked you, what information do you still need? If you remember that, just to summarize from that like hodgepodge of information that you put down on the slide, which was wonderful. Um, this is, these are some of the things that came up. Um, less so, less frequently was the sort of cultural, societal, human interaction with these woodlots. Um, and I think it's important to acknowledge, right, um, the history of it, not just like, you know, the Guelph history of it, but the indigenous history of it um, and um, <clears throat> the use of it, how it's being used right now, who maybe wants access to it or wants it back. Um, and, uh, and all of those things are really an important part of the conversation when we're talking about the development of land or the preservation of land. So one of the key things that did come up, and I'm grateful um, because it connects directly to what we're going to do, is the number of species. So let's just focus on that when we're thinking about the woodlots or when we're thinking about any place, right? Um, the number of species. What we're going to do is we're going to create some big breakout rooms again. I wish we could make them a little smaller, but we can't. Um, we're limited to, to 30 breakout rooms. What we want you to do, though, is to discuss very briefly why uh, do you think that the number of species in a habitat would be important information to have? Why does it matter if there's one or 50 or 50,000? Why does that matter when you're making decisions about which ones to develop or which ones to remove, right? Um, and then maybe more importantly, how would you determine the number of species? What would you go about doing in order to figure out how many there actually are? So we'll give you about five minutes to see if you can have that discussion. If you need us, you can ping us um, and ask us to join your group. I believe, I hope. And as you go, if you're uh, in the chat, there are some uh, links that I'm posting to different walks through these forests that you can, uh, you've got on your course link in your asynchronous part clip. Great, so go ahead, have a bit of a conversation. seem to be the only... Not really the only... No, there's nope. two others with us. Hello. Hi. That's okay. That's great that they're willing to... Yeah. To be in that space. I... Yeah. I think that and Alex Smith might join. No, I know. So there's just one other person because you're the other one that's not... Chat is disabled for some reason. Where? Here, yeah. Now we 
to chat? I guess so in there. Yeah. Okay, try now. The shot. Some new people coming in. If you are just joining us, we're doing a bit of a breakout room session, um, following along the questions that are on the slide. If you want to just, you know, hang out, it would probably be a bit awkward to throw you into a breakout room right now. So just just sit back tight. We'll close them up in uh, about three or four minutes. Great. The shop. Some mouse. What's that? Chat is working. Try now. Okay. It is working. Good. Good. scared for a second. I thought we weren't recording. Uh, we are. <laughs> oh, we're getting asked for help. What? Amazing. We're going to get to talk with people. That's not this year. Hello. Hello. Uh, I like what you've done with the room. <laughs> we can't hear you, though. I wonder. Is he in the chat? In the chat? Is there a chat? Can you know. chat? Uh, so, so, sorry, sorry, Professor. Sorry, sorry, my induction burner makes, makes a lot of noise in the background. background so it's uh, time to do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Somebody somebody asked for help from this room or accidentally. No. Someone, Someone just put, put in the, the chat, chat that they didn't, didn't remember what the questions were. Oh, good. Okay. So the questions are, uh, why, here, I'll put them in the chat. Why number of species matters and how would you measure it? Something like that. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thanks, okay. <laughs> okay. Bye. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you goodbye. So did we back out of that room or did we walk out forwards? We backed out. There we go. We are back. We'll need to reshare the screen, I think. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh. I don't know. Oh, I know why. I know why. You're you're right. It's the sharing of the screen thing. Yeah. Sorry. There. Et, as they say, voila. Et voila. Ça y est. Okay. Are we inviting people back? Yes. Because. Let's invite everyone back. I'll disable the cat. Okay. Okay, so now we have to go through this, but it's fine, it's fast. <sighs> Welcome back! So the rooms take about one minute to close. So in about 30 seconds, uh, the rooms will whisk everyone back and we'll get started. So in Zoom's pre-COVID times, did it take as long to close down the rooms? Or is it <laughs> More like cleaning you, need is, a, yeah. you need a full minute to like... Uh -huh. Welcome back to everyone right now. <laughs> okay. That was a good joke. That was a good joke. There we go. Hello. Uh, are we still muted? It says here that we're still muted. 
unmute. Very good. Hello, welcome back. Okay, so we hope that you've sort of touched on it. These are challenging questions. We're not expecting that you're going to come up with an immediate answer, but we wanted you to kind of be in that space of thinking about this. Um, imagining your body kind of walking into the dairy bush and like, what would it do to start figuring out how many species are there? It's, it's like, it's pretty overwhelming. Even if you want to feel it, like walk out into a public park or your backyard or even your patio or your balcony um, and, and just start asking yourself, how am I going to measure the number of species that are here? We have some answers. We don't have all of them. So that feeling of being overwhelmed is a biological feeling, and it's not one that you need to avoid. It's one that you can follow and be excited by. It's, I, the first time I was in a rainforest in Costa Rica, I was overwhelmed. I didn't, know, I didn't know how to ask the questions. I didn't know who to ask the questions, and I didn't know how to interpret the answers. And so I thought, I shouldn't be an English major. I should go and study biology. Um, and so some of the answers of how to ask the questions become taxon specific, but some of them are, are general and, and you start kind of adding tools to your toolbox as you go. These are some classic ones. So within a habitat, or as I said earlier, a place, one way of measuring diversity is uh, Roger Whitaker called them alpha, beta, gamma. So the first one, alpha, is within that habitat or place. And it's most frequently measured as the richness of a taxon, so genus richness, but we'll talk about species richness. Um, there's another kind of a more fine scaled or a more um, nuanced. Nuanced. Nu is the is the sea nuanced? <laughs> <laughs> the sea is silent. Oh my god! It's a slightly nuanced version uh, called the Shannon Diversity Index. And then, of course, as soon as you start, you, once you leave that place and you go to your next place, you're like, well, wait a second. Is the diversity the total number of things that I've seen or is it the shared number of things between these places? And you, of course, are quite clever by thinking that because those are two different ways of categorizing diversity. Beta diversity is the shared diversity between a place or two places or three places. And then the total richness, the regional species pool of the forests that you visited in Costa Rica as a young person is, is the gamma species diversity. So um, we're done class? Because you just told them. Oh. So now they know. Well, they're there all there. No, well, let's but play yes, with it. Well, there's telling and then there's showing. <laughs> there's showing. Let's show you. Um, and it's really important to note that you can imagine if there are 26 or at least 26 definitions of species, there are many ways of assessing diversity, right? And we're going to show you four, and that's all you need to be responsible for. Um, but just recognize that actually the Shannon Diversity Index, there are three different equations. Um, and if you use one and not the other, you're going to get, you know, criticism. They're going to go, well, I use this one. And you'll be like, well, I use this one. And here's why. And that's fine. That's Everybody exactly. go off and polish your diversity yeah. index. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. But we're going to show you four because they're kind of, they, they ex, you know, they cover a certain breadth of, of measurements of diversity, which are cool. Um, Let's start really simple. Do not second guess yourself that, you know, maybe you're missing something because this is simple. Yep. Okay. So very, very first alpha species diversity is simply expressing the number of species in each habitat. So how many species are in habitat one and how many species are in habitat two and feel free to write on the, on the slide. It's totally fine. Three, three, three. Very good. Three, three, three. Good. Super. It's perfect. Somebody put an equal sign between them. They have the same number yes. of species. You're absolutely correct. Well done. Um, okay. We will clear. Thank you. Okay. That's it. That's as compli complicated as it gets. Okay. Would that it were so simple. <laughs> It is I, that simple. I feel like we need to give them like a list of movies that we refer to when I we do this. The, I posted oh, a good. link to that scene before. Okay. So, um, so yeah. So, species diversity or, or alpha species diversity for habitat one and habitat two are identical. But are they the same? Right? And that's another question that we need to kind of keep in the backs of our minds. But for now, 
all things being equal, if we use alpha species diversity, the answer is three for both of these, okay? Now, how do we know that we've got all of the species that are in there, right? And this is, this is a big question. Imagine that you're going into the dairy bush or here, we're going into the arboretum and we're gonna start counting species. And we're gonna try to do it in a bit of a like regimented way, right? Consistent way. We might set up certain plots, certain areas and count the number of species in each of these and then go to another area and count the number of species there. Now, as you do this more and more, the number of new species that you find is probably going to diminish over time, right? And that means that you're at a saturation point. It means that you're probably capturing most of the diversity, most of the different species that are there. And so when you get to that saturation level, that plateau, you can probably stop sampling. Wait, what is that in the distance? I see it. I see it. It's an asymptote. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, and that feels really good. And then you can go, yeah, okay, I'm done, finished for the day, right, or the weeks, okay? Of course, as you change your definition of place, that becomes a little bit more complicated, right? And so as you increase the geographic scale of things, you may never get to that plateau. So you may never be able to account for all of the different species. Can I say another example about scale real quick? Yep. And that is that as you reduce the scale, the, the size of the taxon of the, of that you're looking at, the animals or plants that you're looking at, that line becomes steeper and steeper. And That's it's true. much less likely to hit an asymptote. Yep. Like all the lions and tigers and bears are accounted lions for usually within bear. the first Boom. couple of plots, right? <laughs> Lion, tiger, bear. Done. Oh my. <laughs> That's interesting. Thank you. Midges? Yeah. Midges? Yeah. Midges! <laughs> Okay, so how do we know when we stop counting? It's when we get to the plateau, if we can get to the plateau. And so we have a question for you. Based on that, here's a question. So you just, we just kind of like, you know, covered that, taught you that. So, you know, do your best and we'll take it up. I'll uh, throw the polling question at you through a poll. Here comes a poll. Here comes a poll. And then you can kind of move it to the side so that you can still see the graph. And go ahead. Please don't editate. Let me take that away. Yeah. I feel like calling these results as a like we were at the like a horse race. Like we were down at the harness track. <laughs> down under four hundred one day. Oh, bees pulling up from behind. <laughs> We've got old G. Come back round the curtain. Are we not muted? No. We don't, because we'll forget. <laughs> then we'll have to say purposes. We're about 75%. We'll wait just a little bit longer. Okay, 
about 15 more seconds. And a little bit longer. <laughs> so close, so close. Okay, good. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna throw these back at you now and share the results. Um, so most of you did get the correct answer. So the correct answer is D down here, where 53% of you got it correct, well done just brand new information, right? So don't worry about it. Um, then the second most popular answer, which is the first most popular incorrect answer, uh, is A. And so if you wouldn't mind, I have a question for you, just to follow up on why A is not the correct answer. If you wouldn't mind preparing your stamps, not don't stamp yet, okay? Um, but let's take a look at the, um, the question and it says diversity is higher at a y okay so this is not correct can you please put a stamp on the line that makes this statement not correct yes very good well done very, very good. Yes, it is exactly that line there, which now I can't, oh wait, it's, the, okay, KR, I think it is. <laughs> um, it is exactly that line there because neither of them have reached saturation. It, but yeah, good. You're continuing uh, it for us. That's perfect. <laughs> you guys perhaps, are awesome. Perhaps, I mean, right? Perhaps that's what it does. Maybe not, but we can't say for sure that diversity is higher at AY until all of those are saturated, right? Um, so thank you. That, that was fun. <laughs> um, and it worked out perfectly. And I hope that that makes sense. So the only thing that we really can say among these statements that are true, uh, well, the, that are, most of them are false, but we can say that sampling intensity is almost nearly saturated at OG. Okay. Um, play with these, play around with them. Somebody wrote that they really liked it. It was a beautiful graph. There are tons of, tons of bits of information in this graph and yep. you can use it in so many different ways. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, we're going to clear and we're going to move on. So if you remember, we established that there were three species within, uh, these two habitats and we asked, so are they the same? And no, because <laughs> that would be too simple, right? <laughs> As you might imagine if we're going to ask about it. That's right. So there's another thing that we need to think about, um, and that is something, a concept called evenness. Okay, so that's a big level concept, and we can measure evenness in many different ways, right? One of the ways is the Shannon Diversity Index. And this is important because remember, language isn't tricky, it's precise. So if we ask you about the Shannon Diversity Index, we are asking you about a specific thing within the concept of evenness. If we ask you about evenness, that's something that's a much broader concept, okay? So just make sure that you can like focus your brain in and out on the two different, like the distinctions between them. So we can see that these are not even, right? If you want, please take a look at them. And if evenness talks about the relative difference in the number of individuals within a species, right, where something that is even has the same number of individuals for every species, and something that is not even, where there's like sort of disparity in the number of individuals, there are some that are more abundant than others, can you please put a stamp on the one that is more even? Yay. Cool. Super. Bingo. Very well done. Okay. That's great. So that's the concept of evenness, right? Now we're going to talk a little bit about the Shannon Diversity Index because it is, whew, there's all sorts of stuff to pull apart there.
So we're going to clear. High evenness, low evenness. I think you got it, right? You did. Okay, cool. Now when we talk about Shannon, I think one of the things to one of the things that we've got as we talk about it mm -hmm. is this idea that this was very deep thinking man. This is Claude Shannon. He's like the or Darth is, Vader of math. No, he's different Star Wars reference. This is Grand Moff Tarkin. Oh, okay. <laughs> Vader was a pudgy guy by the end. Oh, okay. Grand Moff Tarkin. If you, uh, Grand Moff Tarkin. <laughs> There yep, we go. So Google that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is the Shannon Diversity Index. And both of these images literally made my face do this. Okay. <laughs> like, look at it. Right? That's that's the equation. And look at how Claude Shannon is just looking at you going, I made it complicated because my face is complicated. I have to talk on my teeth. <laughs> okay, so this is the Shannon Diversity Index, and we want you to feel comfortable working with the Shannon Diversity Index. Yes, we want you to buddy up to Grand Moff Tarkin, uh -huh. like nuzzle his cheek, give him a leg <laughs> And go, I can head. do math, yeah. I can do this, because you totally can. Yeah. We'll show you how. It's not that bad. So allow your face to do this for a minute. This is an important stage. And then relax your face. <laughs> because... The first thing that you'll notice in the Shannon diversity equation is this like super big E zigzag thing, right? Summation! And all that means is the sum of. I you love it. That. Yeah. So you, you just plus a whole yeah. bunch of stuff. Easy. You got this. Okay. <laughs> Here's what you plus. <laughs> so don't panic. All you need to do is break it down, okay? And all the Shannon diversity <laughs> index is doing is it's playing <laughs> numbers of individuals and species, okay? But it's doing it in a very specific way such that you're able to express the relative contribution of a species to the total number of individuals within that place, okay? You need time for this. You're not expected to be perfect by the end of this lecture, but you're here to like just be introduced to it. So if we break it down, the Shannon Diversity Index is number of individuals of species one divided by the number of individuals of all the species. Okay, that's just a proportion. That's just a ratio yep. that's represented for each of the species. And then you multiply it by the lawn of that same number. Why? Who the fuck cares? Because the other two Shannon diversity indices are multiplied by the log of this number, multiplied by the negative E of this, whatever. It doesn't matter. Who cares? That's not the important part of the equation, okay? The important part of the equation is the fact that it's capturing that relative proportion of the number of individuals of a species over the number of total individuals of all the species, okay? And then you just do that. You add it, that's that big sum, to the number of individuals of species two, divided by the same number of total individuals of all the species, and you multiply that by the lawn of that same number, and then you add it to, and you just keep on going for every species that you count. <coughs> That's the Shannon Diversity Index. And the only reason it's negative is because that natural log makes it makes the other makes that makes calculation negative. negative, so it's kind of correcting it so you can look at it. Yeah. Cut so off. you multiply it, yeah, the, the the lawn thing makes it negative. So then you multiply it by a negative one and then you get a positive, right? Um, yeah. That's it. That's now it. what we want you to be able to do is to calculate the Shannon Diversity Index. At no point will we ask you to memorize the formula because I don't know it, he doesn't know it, we look it up all the time. More importantly is though, <coughs> be able to like be told a scenario, right? We tell, we tell you about a woodlot, we tell you about a change in the number of species, then we'll ask you, will this increase the Shannon Diversity Index or decrease the Shannon Diversity Index? Or how will it change? Or will it change at all? We want you to understand how that formula moves, right? But how, but how do you, how do you change the variables to do it? And to do that, you've got to play around with it. And so we have some homework for you that you are not to do until after Thanksgiving um, that, uh, that will help you understand how it moves. Okay. So we've got these things. We've got 
uh, alpha diversity in a place that can be as simple as count the number of things of taxon of taxa of species that are there, or slightly more nuanced. Uh, nuanced, as I learned this morning, but nuanced version, the Shannon Diversity Index, uh, Index, which incorporates the relative proportion or different relative abundances of different species in the habitat. Yes. So then the next question is what, okay, so we've looked at a place, we've looked at that place in two ways, one more nuanced than the others. What if we have two places? That we have to compare, right? So great, um, it's complicated. Would that it were so simple. <laughs> so the gamma diversity index is basically a large scale alpha diversity yeah. index. So pretty simple, right? Yeah. You have two habitats and all you do is you kind of make them seem as though they are just one, yeah. right? I think, do yeah, we get rid slide. of? Yeah. Next I slide. So. There we go. We're basically just making them one large scale habitat. And this matters for a bunch of reasons, right? Because if you remember before, we had three species in habitat one, three species in habitat two, right? Fine. Alpha diversity is three. Gamma diversity for those two original ones would also be three because they're the same species. But what happens if habitat two has a totally different species? If you calculate gamma now, you're going to get four or maybe five, right? We've got actually, we've got a bunch of different ones here, right? So it's going to be five probably. So we make a large scale habitat and now we calculate alpha and you can see that it's a little bit different and that matters, right? Because that second habitat is contributing to diversity. Beta. Beta is kind of your favorite. I love beta. I love beta. There's a whole bunch of nuanc in beta as well. <laughs> So we have alpha diversity of two places, um, and then we have, so we've got uh, piney trees and palmy trees and deciduous trees in habitat one and piney trees and deciduous style trees and crazy, uh, who's down in Whoville trees as well. <laughs> so one of the simple, uh, there, and there's a number of different calculations to do this beta diversity as well as there is for alpha. One of the common elements to all those calculations is calculating the number of species in common to both habitats. I'm going to keep coughing for a second. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. <coughs> I swallowed a fly. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know why. I okay. swallowed a fly. So, so basically what you want to do though, is <coughs> you can use beta in a bunch of different ways. You can use beta to describe the relative difference between two existing habitats. Um, or you can use beta to describe change over time mm -hmm. by saying that habitat one was a hundred years ago and habitat two is now. How has that changed over time? Wait, space and time are the same what? thing? What? Well, they are according to beta diversity. And Einstein. <laughs> okay. So, so you can use this in a really powerful way and you can imagine in the, you know, in the context of massive, the climate crisis and, and, and the diversity crisis that beta diversity has become a really important concept in conversation. And then you can imagine that there are 56 different ways of measuring it and you would not be wrong. So we're going to keep it simple though for you. Can okay? I give an example of how just... Uh, we're super running out of time. Okay, one of, the, one of the ways that it's really interesting to think about in terms of diversity that we use a lot is whether or not the diversity is a replacement across space or whether it's like a nested Russian doll oh. of like, there's a place that has all the things and, and then, then there's like... sub places that have subsets of that. Oh. Or is it replacement? Those are like super important questions across the landscape. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, thanks. You could that's like a carrot to go like, oh, this could be interesting to come back to later on when I'm gonna win the Nobel Prize in Well, and if you're interested in a in a career in biological philosophy, that's kind of a thing, right? Mm. Yeah. Or conservation. Amazing. Okay. So we're gonna keep it simple, but we want you to be in that complex space for a moment. But basically for the purposes of this course, beta diversity is the alpha diversity of habitat one minus the common species diversity between the two of them, right? So the, the number of species that they have in common, plus the alpha diversity of habitat two, minus the same number, the common number of species, okay? So it's, it's nice so you, and simple. So you got this. Yeah, you totally got this, right? Okay, wait though, here. How, here we have one, two, 
three species in habitat one and yep. we have three species in habitat two, right? So alpha diversity of habitat one is three minus the number of species they have in common, just the pine tree, minus one. Three minus one. Two. Wait a second, I got this. Oh, you already had it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, well, let, let's, I'll, let's I'll do the up, next one. Okay, so number of species in habitat two, which is mm. three, minus the number of species that they have in common is? One. Three minus one is? Two. two. Two plus two is? Four. That's a simple version, okay? That's how you go through it. You got this. So, to review, <laughs> these are the two indices that we've, um, we've thrown at you to describe sort of across habitat um, biodiversity differences, as well as sort of overall contributions, okay? Um, and this is really just a repeat of what we had from the original slide before. Very important to start thinking about how are these calculated? How can I change them? Why does it matter? Homework. And do not do this until next week after Thanksgiving, please. Um, but here it is. It's all typed out here. It'll walk you through the steps associated with getting to become familiar. See if you can come up with like big statements about how the Shannon Diversity Index works, but you're going to dive into all of the indices if you follow along with this homework, okay? We don't have to go through it now because you're not to look at it until after Thanksgiving. Do not look. Do not look. Uh, and here are the slides again that you can use in order to be able to do the homework, okay? Great. So in this week of uh, this coming weekend, give thanks, give thanks a whole, probably there's the 2020 makes you think about the things you're not thankful for. There's probably still underneath that a, uh, a bunch of a scaffold, a support of things to, to think about. Yeah. As you think about them, uh, I hope you're Zooming with people and you're together socially and maybe distanced physically. Yeah. And so we're not going to have a lecture on Monday. And we're not going to have a lecture on Wednesday. No, nope, mental health break. Mental Take health the whole break. week. So please. Yes. Yeah. Very, very good luck on you. You don't need it. You've no, you got don't need this it. You've got for your it. midterm. Yeah. Um, and uh, you'll be fine. It is open book. You cannot use any of those, you know, academic misconduct sites, but you can access all of the biological information in the world to make your to make up your your midterm. And seriously, don't use Bing. Don't. <laughs> um, it will be okay. Sign in at some point on Friday. You'll have two hours. It's more than enough time. Like way more than enough time. Um, remember, we're not looking for you to just spit out the definitions of things. That's not going to count. We want you to show us that you know how to use them, okay? Um, and if you can do it succinctly, that's great. If you need more space in your short answers to do it, that's great too. Um, but, uh, but spend time and because it's a two hour, you have the opportunity to learn that stuff in the moment if you need to. So look it up, check out what those definitions are, see if you can understand it. And if you need that time to catch <coughs> up, you will have plenty of time. Yeah, there's there's some people that are stressing, or seem appear uh, anxious about the amount of time that we've given. It won't take two hours, we've no. said that. How much time should it take? It's up to you. It, it, I mean, you might sign in and take, do it in a half an hour. Yeah. So, so there are um, there are some like online quizzy stuff. True false. Ten true false. Yep. Um, and then um, there are four other ones. Four questions. That's it. Yep. Okay. They're short answer. Um, two of them you will be asked to draw something and upload it. You can draw it on your your on Word. You can yep. draw it on PowerPoint. You can draw it on a piece of paper and take a photo of it. The instructions of how to upload it are all there. Yep. Um, but there are four questions. Um, the, the first two are kind of general stuff. Um, and then the next two are more specific. Um, and uh, it will be okay. And you will be fine. And if you forget the definition of something, you will have time to Google it. It yep. will be fine. Look it up. Yes, we're actually really excited to see how you do um, and we will be taking a look at how you do so that we can reevaluate, you know, whether or not we need to kind of tweak things. Um, do not worry. Go off and have a wonderful long weekend um, and focus on relaxing and engaging with your families and friends uh, in the safest way possible. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Bye. And of course, we're stopping everything. And, and we'll, we'll be take back in a, a second, minute. and then yeah. uh, we'll keep chatting for okay. those of you who want to stick around.